All right. Let's get started. So if you're in this room, you probably have an idea of the transition from Web 2 to Web 3 and the opportunity it provides us to achieve digital freedom, where IPFS provides us a foundation to build a censorship-resistant, tamper-proof, and decentralized, decentralized web, Filecoin provides us an incentive layer for storage. So, I'm not here to torture you with the three diagrams you've seen over a thousand times. Hands up if you're sick of them. I've seen them so many times right in the, in, right in the front, yeah. So I'm here to speak about adoption. I'm here to speak about onboarding users and what, how we're doing that at Portrait. And to do that, you have to ask yourself the question, what exceptional value can we give to the user? So we understand that the user needs a censorship-resistant web. We understand that the user needs tamper-proof web content. And we understand there's a need for decentralized governance. So let's go over some examples, right? What kind of situation can we think of when we talk about censorship resistance? Back in 2011, during the Arab Spring, the Egyptian government basically turned off the internet for all the protesters and all the activists. That's a very good example of censorship resistance. Additionally, we can, we can think of whistleblowers and other activists. And within the Falcon ecosystem, we, can be, we are very fortunate to have onboarded Snowden and have onboarded uh, WikiLeaks. But there are so many more individuals which can be onboarded because these individuals are high value individuals. But what about an activist in Egypt? What about the average person? We should be able to onboard them as well. And when we think about tamper-proof web content, we can think about Vitalik, proving that he's still alive by showing a picture of him holding the current block height at the time. And we can think of Vitalik desperately trying to prove that he's not giving away Ethereum or Ether because all the bots are trying to act like they're Vitalik, right? And when we think about decentralized governance, and for this one, I, I, I've bought an example. So I will be asking you guys a question, and hopefully you can respond to it. So let's say you're a business owner, and you're trying to sell goods online through a major online marketplace. Where, which marketplace would you go? Where would you go? Anyone? Amazon. Amazon. So. Good answer. So you would go to Amazon, right? And Amazon, of course, is very ethically and will not do anything wrong. And oh, that's a surprise. Amazon systematically used third-party sellers' data to copy products and promote them to shoppers, despite saying otherwise. So that's a good one when we think about uh, centrally governing platforms, right? If you, you're not just a user, but you're also the product. And so what can we say about all these things, right? So WikiLeaks, having a wiki, uh, maybe you would like to open up a web shop, or maybe you're just sharing some media. What have all these things have in common? They're all websites. Now, websites are the backbone of the web. So if we want to create a decentralized web, why not start with the backbone? So the user needs a website. We understand that. And we understand these three points. We understand that. And that's, ah, wow, that's a good one. So we understand that users, that, 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 that users should be able to build decentralized websites. But at their current stage, 
how can we build a decentralized website? So let me get through this with you guys because it's absolutely horrendous. So first of all, you have to learn a bit about IPFS. Get a bit of a technical foundation, right? Maybe run your own node. Learn about pinning services such as Infura, Pinata. And if you would like to achieve uh, persistent storage, learn about Filecoin. Then you'll dive into Lotus and maybe some aggregators such as Estuary, Web3.storage. And of course, there's some way you have to prove the auth authenticity, right? So we have to do a bit of research into SSI, self-sovereign self identity. Then we can go into like, oh, Ethereum, MetaMasks, uh, some way to onboard and to prove ownership. ENS, to create human readable formats instead of complex strings of addresses. Learn a bit about like libraries like ethers.js ethers just to prove that like do some digital signing with that. And then you have to bundle everything together into a website. So might as well learn some React while you're at it. And really thinking about non-technical people, right? That's just way too overwhelming. So we've asked ourselves this question. Why can't a non-technical user who actually needs decentralized websites build one easily? So again, think of the, the activists in Egypt who are just people like, well, not like people like you and me because most of the people in this room are technical, but just the average person who isn't technical. And that's exactly what we're trying to solve at Portrait. So during this talk, you will see the ingredients of how we, Portrait, design trustless, decentralized, and censorship-resistant websites. And, and this is a very special one because it's the first time we're, we're showing this in public, we will show you a live demo of what you can build with Portrait today. So let's begin at step one. And to do that, we have to get rid of some assumptions. We cannot assume anything of the user. So the user does not have a technical understanding of IPFS. Ethereum, blockchain wallets, or even programming experience. The user does not understand the concept of gas fees or is simply not willing to pay for it. And with that in mind, we focused and we researched these three topics, identity, computable trust, and persistence. And today we will share with you our findings on these topics. So let's start off with identity. And the major conclusion we, 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 the major thing that we concluded during our research is this. In order to, there's always a trade-off. So if you would like to have a high, high decentralization, you're probably very low in user experience. And from the other side, if you're high in user experience, you're probably low in decentralization. So a good example for this is Magic Link. So Magic provides a way to onboard users with Ethereum through passwordless um, authentication. However, at Magic, you do not own your own keys. And on the other side of the spectrum, there is running your own node. So when we focused on onboarding through Ethereum, we also discovered Doth ease domains. And Doth ease domains are very, very, it's a very, very exciting uh, upcoming trend because Ethereum domains is one of the few to solve the Zucos triangle. And the Zucos triangle is a trilemma consisted of three things. Decentralization, security, and human meaningful names. So it's about naming. And Zuko stated that it's only possible to achieve two out of three things. And Doth ease domains, or ENS domains, are one of the first ones to achieve all three of these. And we've seen a crazy amount of adoption. We've seen over 1.3 million domain names being registered, and of those 1.3 million domain names, 300,000 have been registered just last month. So that's something we really integrated into Portrait. And with that, with that being said, let's move over to Computable Trust. 
And this is a bit of a, a new finding for us, because when you think about Web2, you can think about Twitter, for example. So if you post a tweet, Twitter is able, because they're governing the platform, they can change the content of the tweet or delete the tweet. With digital signatures or message signing, because you're using mathematically, um, a mathematically, like a function, it's impossible to temper the message. And the same principle goes for on-chain, like smart contracts and stuff. So, the same goes for Twitter. You don't have control over the access on a platform. Think about Donald Trump being sus suspended. Whereas on the other end, smart contracts are open, or anything on-chain, basically, computable stuff on-chain is open. It's accessible for everyone. And now we're here in the middle. You could create a Twitter where the, the content is tamper-proof, but it's still possible to suspend someone. And that's something at Portrait where we started thinking about, like, is there a way to make this red line of text a green line of text? And that's when we find out, found out that what if we offloaded the content created on Portrait onto Filecoin? So what we're doing is any website created through Portrait is when it's published or when it's saved, it is not located on Portrait or on our domain or, any, or anything. So we're offloading this onto the Filecoin network and then we cannot do anything with it. It's open. And that's something we leverage with our design, which I will show you in a bit. And next up was persistence. So we should have a way, right, to put all these websites onto Filecoin. And I would like to give a big shout out to the people from Estuary. Um, big shout out to Jamie Lee as well, who provided us, provided us access through Estuary, in which we can provide our users with 500, 540 days of storage, replicated six times onto the network across 170 providers. So that's really great. And as of now, it's free, but maybe there will be a day where it will not be free anymore. So we've also took that into account, right? But storing data on Filecoin compared to Amazon S3 is really, really a way better solution. So it's like 0.0014% compared to, so the cost of storing it onto Filecoin is 0.0014% compared to Amazon S3. And I think that's truly amazing. Man, that's just, that's truly, that's truly something special. So these three things is what we're bringing together with Portrait. And I'm very excited today to show you a quick demo. So this is the, uh, this is where you get started and you can add over and connect your wallet. So you start off with an empty portrait, of course, and then you can pick your components. Let's say, let's start with a hero. And then we can change the title and the image and everything, like the way we would like to see it. Let's say, hello, Austin. And then we can add another component, for example. We can add a, a CTA, edit it, or even move it upwards, or even delete it. And we can add some features and maybe a heading, which, which we will move a bit more above. And well, for now, let's just call this a great website. But you could change and edit everything just from the browser. So that's a button, right? And after that, you can just easily publish your website. And this will be done in a matter of seconds. So once you've signed, and what you're signing right now is basically the contents of the website. It's a proof. It will be part of the proof. So now you're publishing it. And there it is. That was within two seconds. As you can see right now on the upper left, you can see your user 
and we've spoke about ENS, and it's automatically resolving the correct ENS domain, and as well, we're resolving the avatar, and everything is done on-chain. So there's no centralized database fetching this information. And as you can see, this is the website, and on the, on the bottom, on the lower right, I will zoom a bit, you can see this portrait is verified. Ah, that's pretty cool. So once you hit show proof, you can see the actual contents of the page, which is then tamper proof. You can verify these things, as you saw the green check mark over there in the corner, it's already verified by us. It's, everything's being verified on the client side. And this can be verified easily through Etherscan, for example. We also have a in-depth page of how the, how the proofs work, so how we're using SHA-265, Base64, everything. And um, we're very excited to say that our beta, beta program is open now. We specially allocated some space for the people over here in, in Falcon Austin, at, at Falcon Austin. So after this talk, you can visit portal.gg, sign up for the beta program, reach out to Gilliam right here, reach, reach out to me, and we will be happy to onboard you. It's, it's all for free, no costs, no programming experience, and uh, it's time for decentralized website, guys. Thank you.